CNN Headline News. I'm Judy Fortin, sitting in for Chuck Roberts. U.S. Attorney General William Barr has named his own special investigator to look into a case involving questionable loans to Iraq. Retired federal judge Frederick Lacey will examine how the Bush administration handled allegations surrounding the Italian bank BNL. The manager of the BNL's Atlanta branch has been accused of fraudulently funneling billions of dollars to Iraq. The Justice Department has charged the CIA with withholding information about the case, but Barr says it is the current political environment that prompted his action. A number of allegations have been leveled recently at a number of the prosecutors in this department. If, as I believe, they have done nothing wrong, they deserve exoneration. In the current political climate, I have regrettably concluded that if I determine they have done nothing wrong, they will not receive that exoneration. Barr has refused requests by congressional Democrats for a court-appointed independent prosecutor to investigate the BNL case. The Bush administration today received some discouraging economic numbers. Exports, which President Bush has called a key source of America's strength, dropped in August at their sharpest rate in five years. And the U.S. trade deficit ballooned to $9 billion in August. That's almost 24% higher than the previous month, and the biggest trade gap since late 1990. Industrial production fell for the second month in a row in September. The Federal Reserve Board says it was down two-tenths of a percent following a four-tenths of a percent drop in August. There was a sour note to what President Bush's campaign officials are calling a victory rally for last night's debate. Bush was heckled as he spoke to an audience at New Jersey's Middlesex Community College today. He called the hecklers draft dodgers and told them to shut up. In his speech, much. Bush said he'll make a political comeback, just like the Atlanta Braves did in Game 7 of the National League playoffs. You know, I sort of identify with the Atlanta Braves because politics is like baseball. It ain't over until the last batter swings and we are going to win this election. The president's spin doctors, meanwhile, are trying to laugh off an embarrassing mistake. Journalists received faxes meant for Bush supporters that urged them to call their local political reporter and praise Bush's debate performance. It also told them to issue a news release declaring Bush the winner. Bill Clinton is back on the campaign trail. The Democratic presidential candidate is in Louisiana today, taking a quick bus tour of the state with running mate Al Gore. Earlier in Virginia, Clinton declared last night's debate format a big success and declared himself the winner. The Arkansas governor also hinted he may revise his program to deal with the stagnant economy. There may be some ways to increase investment uh, without increasing the deficit. There may be some other spending cuts and some things that you could do that would finance and increase the investment tax credit, for example. Uh, I think we have to keep these things in very careful balance. And uh, that's why I, I haven't reached any decision about that. But I, I do think it's something that ought to be looked at. Acting Secretary of State Lawrence Eagleburger is taking full responsibility for the handling of Clinton's passport files. Democrats have charged the State Department used improper procedures to obtain government information about Clinton. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee had scheduled hearings on the matter today, but later postponed them. Independent candidate Ross Perot is back in Dallas today. He'll hit the airwaves again tonight with a new half-hour television commercial. It's expected to outline Perot's prescription for fixing the economy and reforming the federal government. A major issue in the vice presidential debate focused on a program that Democrats claim sends American jobs overseas. Bonnie Anderson looks at what the Agency for International Development really does. It is a heated topic of the campaign. Mr. Bush has used these workers' own tax dollars to pay for policies to take their jobs away. Democrats charging the Republican administration is encouraging American companies to move their jobs to Latin America. In Decaturville, Tennessee, not very far from my home, a factory was shut down right there when they were solicited by officials paid with U.S. taxpayers' money. And then the replacement workers in a foreign country were trained with our tax dollars, and then their imports were subsidized coming back into the United States. We do not have, we do not have any program that encourages companies to close down here and to go and invest in foreign, uh, in foreign soil. That is absolutely outrageous. Who was wrong? Both candidates were.
the U.S. State Department does fund several Latin American business promotion agencies that, among other things, encourage American companies looking for cheap labor to move to the region. While this type of American economic involvement does help stabilize shaky countries, some economists say it's a double-edged sword. This does expose American jobs to potential foreign fights. But federal officials say the United States has gained much more than it has lost. By promoting economic growth in Latin America, it builds markets for American products. U.S. exports to Latin America have grown by $50 billion since 1987, they say, creating a million jobs at home. Uh, in El Salvador, for example, we have assisted nine U.S. companies. None of them, by the way, have closed down any operations in the United States to move to El Salvador. As a matter of fact, most of them have increased employment in the United States as a result of their expansion overseas. But with so many Americans out of work, a coalition of unions is claiming the companies that moved to Latin America closed at least 65 plants in the United States. Was the Tennessee factory that Senator Gore referred to one of them? No, says the Marcade Group, the holding company that owned it. The factory and its parent company folded because they were broke. A spokesman said a separate firm owned by the holding company began manufacturing in El Salvador a year earlier and has no connection with the Tennessee facility. But in Decaturville, Tennessee, the explanations given by Mercade and Washington are greeted with angry skepticism. It hurts the businessman down the street. It hurts the man that runs the restaurant. It hurts the uh, beautician. It hurts the man that sells gasoline. But in a campaign year, when the economy is the main issue, it makes good fodder for campaign cannons. While the presidential candidates have only one more debate to discuss the issue, there's no doubt American workers will be debating the policy of Latin American economic development for years to come. Free workers' rights! Bonnie Anderson, CNN, Atlanta. European community leaders are trying to allay fears that a proposed union treaty would lead to a European superstate. After a one-day emergency summit in England today, the leaders rejected what they called excessive centralization. They also said they would respect national identities and make the European community less secretive. And the leaders reaffirmed their intentions to ratify the Maastricht Treaty and implement it without change. Dutch officials are asking the United States to make more checks on the type of plane that crashed in Amsterdam 12 days ago. The Dutch Transport Ministry says it is urgently requesting the FAA check for metal fatigue on certain types of Boeing 747s. An Israeli Boeing 747 cargo plane crashed into an Amsterdam apartment complex after its engines fell off. The accident killed at least 64 people. A survivor has been pulled from an earthquake-shattered apartment building in Cairo after being buried in rubble for three days. A nurse says the man survived by drinking his own urine. His family refused to do the same and died following Monday's powerful quake. The official death toll is now 519, with more than 4,000 people injured. The 1992 Nobel Peace Prize has been awarded to Guatemalan Rigoberta Menchu. The Nobel Committee praised Menchu for her human rights efforts on behalf of the five million people native to Guatemala. Menchu, who was orphaned in her country's civil war, plans to use the $1.2 million cash award to set up a fund in her father's name. Thousands of residents of Berlin are paying their last respects to the man praised for paving the way to a, uni a reunified Germany. Former West German Chancellor Willy Brandt will be buried tomorrow. He died last week of cancer at the age of 78. Former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, French President Francois Mitterrand, and Britain's Prince Charles will be among the dignitaries attending the funeral. Some Israeli civilians attacked Palestinians today after the funeral of a Jewish farmer. Police say he was stabbed to death by Palestinians. The increased violence is threatening progress at the next round of Arab-Israeli peace talks. Linda Scherzer reports. This was the scene on a highway in northern Israel, two hours after the funeral of a 33-year-old Israeli farmer. Earlier, there was a collective outpouring of grief as hundreds of Israelis buried the man brutally murdered while tending his fields in this small farming community. Police believe he was stabbed to death by Palestinians, the 99th Israeli killed since the start of the Intifada. Soon after they vented their pain at the cemetery, some vented their anger on the street. At least two dozen Israeli men, apparently seeking revenge, brandished pistols and clubs, searching for cars with blue Palestinian license plates. 
The gang of Israeli youths forced two cars off the highway, then chased five Palestinians across this field, severely beating them. No Arab in their path was spared their fury. Not this man who ran for his life and barely escaped with it. Not this 68-year-old, nor this man who feared his taxi would be set on fire. They stopped us in the middle of the street, dragged us out of the car, then beat us with sticks. Even the CNN crew car was attacked. Journalists were warned not to take pictures. A senior Israeli army officer recently announced that the Intifada is effectively over. But as you can see from these scenes behind me, the passions that fuel this bitter conflict are as strong as ever. Ask this Israeli farmer. Three weeks ago, he was tending his fields when a Palestinian shot him three times at point-blank range. Now his brother carries a weapon, and the Arabs who work in this small farming community have stopped coming till things quiet down. The Intifada is getting worse. The hot weapons, the knives, it's getting worse. Farmer Yitzhak Cohen is ignoring the warning from police that people carry guns when they tend their fields. His friend isn't taking any chances. The Intifada, it's not over. It's uh, maybe be now starting to be bigger now. The death of a Palestinian prisoner this week who took part in a hunger strike prompted a wave of renewed violence. While Israeli and Palestinian negotiators prepare to resume peace talks next week, the aftermath of the Palestinians' death, the brutal killing of the Israeli farmer, and this revenge attack can only widen the gap between them. Linda Scherzer, CNN, Afula in northern Israel. A Florida judge has granted a couple's request to have their adoption of two children terminated. Gary and Alma Knight say they made up their minds after losing their home and business in Hurricane Andrew. They claim the children also had behavioral problems. Authorities say the children were abused by their biological parents. They are now in the care of their current foster parents. The American Civil Liberties Union is suing a suburban New Orleans school board for banning a book called Voodoo and Hoodoo. The book contains a history of voodoo culture and includes instructions for casting spells. A school board member calls it a recipe for sexual perversion and killing. An ACLU attorney says the book ban violates state and federal constitutions. Next up in Dollars and Cents, how Wall Street finished the day. And later, we'll find out if the phrase chocoholic should be taken literally. This is CNN Headline News. We'd like to introduce you to the new Nissan Altima GLE. Altima? Huh, so that's what it's called. It comes with a six-speaker CD system, an available leather trim. It has a powerful 150-horsepower engine, and it has more than 40 standard safety features. Wow, would you look at that? The new Altima, the affordable luxury sedan from Nissan. I wonder what they mean by affordable. Every once in a while, a special film comes along. This is a story about two people so wrong for each other. They had to be right. Kate. About feelings so impossible, they had to happen. About a romance so unlikely, it will win your heart. Remember what it was like to fall in love with a movie. The Cutting Edge, rated PG, starts Friday at a theater near you. Office Depot makes my job a lot easier. I order by phone and get next day delivery. I look up the code numbers in the catalog, phone in the order, and Office Depot takes care of the rest. Taking care of business every day. Taking care of business every way I've been taking care of business. They've always got what I need in stock, and they always guarantee the lowest price. I save time, my boss saves money. Nobody sells more office supplies for less than Office Depot. This Magnavox portable CD player with pure digital sound is the best thing to take on vacation. Unless you compare it with this clever Magnavox 5-inch TV. Great pictures of anywhere. Of course, the best is this compact yet intelligent Magnavox camcorder with autofocus. Unless you take this Magnavox 3-inch LCD TV, which connects to my camcorder so I can watch my vacation on the ride home. Looks as though I had a pretty good time. The ingenious products from Magnavox. Smart. Very smart.
A comeback on Wall Street. Kitty Pilgrim has the closing numbers in this edition of Dollars and Cents. Kitty? Thanks, Judy. Stocks rebounded to finish the day mostly higher. The Dow Industrials wiped out almost all of an early 32-point decline. Sharp losses in IBM and Philip Morris pressured the blue chips for a second straight day. At the closing bell, the Dow is down a quarter point at 31.74. But for the week as a whole, the Dow gained 37 points. Big board volume was heavy today. The other markets posted solid gains. The Nasdaq Composite up nearly four points. Among the day's movers, IBM fell two and an eighth after plunging more than five points yesterday. Several analysts downgrading the stock after IBM reported a massive third quarter loss yesterday. Philip Morris lost two and a half. Investors concerned over weak domestic cigarette sales. Federal Express shot up two and seven eighths after an analyst upgraded the stock. General Electric up one and a quarter on published reports. The company is in talks to sell its television network, NBC. And Apple Computer closed up three and a half. The company reported record quarterly earnings after the market closed yesterday. Some bleak news on the economy today. The U.S. trade deficit skyrocketed in August. The difference between U.S. imports and exports grew by nearly 24 percent to $9 billion, the biggest gap in almost two years. Exports plunged 6.1 percent, the steepest decline in five years, while imports slipped 1.3 percent. And another sign of weakness from the manufacturing sector, production at the nation's factories, mines, and utilities slipped two-tenths of one percent last month, the third decline in four months. A drop in production of durable goods accounted for most of the fall. Weak signals on the economy usually boost bond prices, but not today. The Treasury's 30-year bellwether issue is down 7.30 seconds. It had been down a lot more earlier, the yield moving up to 7.52 percent. Traders say the market is becoming increasingly concerned over the possibility of a Clinton administration. We saw the market react negatively to a reported proposal that is being readied in the Clinton camp, which would bring forth the deficit spending earlier in his presidency and save deficit reduction for the latter part of his presidency. The report on the Clinton plan appeared in today's Los Angeles Times. The Bank of England cut a key short-term interest rate by one percentage point to 8 percent. The move is designed to boost the British economy, which has been gripped by its worst recession since the 1930s. The cuts are hurting the value of the pound against the dollar. The dollar is up four and three-quarters cents against the pound, up two pfennigs against the German mark, but down one yen against the Japanese currency. Finally, jet engine maker Pratt & Whitney today announced more job cuts. The Connecticut-based company will reduce its workforce by 4,800 additional jobs. That comes on top of 2,400 cuts so far this year. The company blamed weak demand for jet engines and spare parts. Recapping the day on Wall Street, bond prices fell. Stocks finished mixed with the Dow losing a quarter point for the day, but up 37 for the week. That's dollars and cents. Now back to you, Judy. Thanks a lot, Kitty. Next in headline sports, Deion Sanders finds a new way to garner publicity. This is CNN Headline News. Mothers have learned from countless doctors and pharmacists nah. to take care of coughs with Robitussin. And they've taken this advice home. Nah. Robitussin recommended by Dr. Mom. Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Excuse me, you're the owner of this place? Yeah, I'm one of them. So you could buy any laser printer you wanted, huh? Well, we bought an HP laser jet printer. But you could have bought any laser printer. Yeah. Why? Ah, oh, just for the novelty of it? I got enough novelty around here. But isn't buying an HP laser jet sort of like a, no, oh, no-brainer? Nah, I think it's kind of like a brainer. HP laser jet printers. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. From the director of Rocky and the Karate Kid comes a visually stunning epic that's supremely entertaining. Stephen Dorff, John Gielgud, and Morgan Freeman deliver a knockout punch in the power of one. Look for it on video cassette. Of all the 
creatures that have mastered this hostile, unrelentingly brutal world, only one comes with a horn that works. The Land Rover Defender. A limited number of these highly evolved vehicles are now available at select Range Rover dealers. I don't know how to say, um, you know, I like, I, uh, words, I, no, what's the word, you know, it's not coming out right. It's easier done than said. Let someone know you're thinking about them. Call 1-800-Flowers. Our name is our number. We'll deliver beautiful flowers anywhere to anyone guaranteed. All you need is a credit card and a telephone for FTD service. 1-800-Flowers. Carol Lee speaking. Yeah, um, would you, um, uh, would you, I, if you would, uh... Call 1-800-Flowers for all your special occasions. I'm Paul Runnels with CNN Headline Sports. Remember that $57,000 check Michael Jordan forked over to a North Carolina businessman? Well, for the first time, Jordan has admitted that it was a gambling debt. It's believed to have come about through bets placed on the golf course. Officials have stressed that Jordan is not under any type of investigation. Seems like Deion Sanders is always in the spotlight one way or another. The latest round of controversy involving the Braves slash Falcons player involves CBS color analyst Tim McCarver. Where is he at? Where's McCarver? McCarver? Right here. right here. Right now. There you go. You I got the real one. man. You know that? <laughs> this, you are a real man, Deion. I'll say that. Sanders was allegedly upset over comments McCarver made criticizing Deion's adventure last Sunday. The one where he played for the Falcons during the day, then hopped the plane back to Pittsburgh for that night's Braves game. National League President Bill White is reviewing this tape. Disciplinary action could be handed down by the league office. The Cincinnati Reds have a new general manager. Player of Development Director Jim Bowden gets the nod, replacing the fired Bob Quinn. Bowden is the fourth GM under Marge Schott. One of his first jobs will be to hire a manager. Lou Pinella is gone. There is speculation that Pinella will get the vacant managerial spot in Seattle. A site has been chosen for the 1998 Goodwill Games. New York City will play host. They beat out Dallas, Miami, and St. Louis. Tomorrow afternoon in Atlanta, Georgia Tech and Florida State meet for bragging rights in the ACC. These two haven't met in 17 years, but the two quarterbacks, Charlie Ward and Sean Jones, go way back. And both quarterbacks were competitors in high school against each other. They tell me one of the greatest games ever played in Thomasville, Georgia, was the last two times those young men hooked up. Paul Runnels. CNN Headline Sports. This is CNN Headline News. I dreaded this visit to the doctor. I had, um, I had stomach problems. You know, more chalky medicine to take. I mean, just getting it down is... <laughs> but what my doctor told me about really blew my mind. Knew my land to joke at. Introducing the antacid with absolutely no chalky taste. New Mylanta gel caps. Potent antacid relief now in an easy to swallow gel cap. New Mylanta gel caps. My doctor said Mylanta. You're married. Two kids. One on the way. A house. A dog. Five on the way. Loads of other responsibilities too numerous to count. And you want this. Doesn't make sense. But here is an interesting alternative that does. The new Volvo 850 GLT. Guitarist Chet Atkins is going to an outhouse tomorrow, but not for the usual reason. He's going to dedicate the opening of a new outhouse for the general store in Gravel Switch, Kentucky. Atkins says he's proud to perform at the opening and feels he's contributing to progress by being there. He says he hopes outhouses make a comeback. Country star Garth Brooks can't believe his fans are paying scalper $750 to see one of his shows. He says he'd only pay that much to see one country singer, and it wouldn't be himself. Brooks says Hank Williams Sr., who died years ago, would be worth the 750 bucks. The French are going to extremes to get their people to read. The government is promoting a crazy about reading campaign this weekend. 500 towns and villages are holding competitions, book telethons, readings, and meetings with writers to contribute to the campaign. The head of the Education and Culture Ministry says he wants culture of all sorts to be available to French people. Are you one of those people who has to fight the urge to eat chocolate? New research says it might take more than just willpower. Elizabeth Swartz explains. Chocolate soldiers. 
chocolate snowmen, chocolate turtles. Meet their owner. Her name is Gail, and she's a chocoholic. I want to stop, and I can't. I'm not successful. I really understand what an addiction is. Gail Hart jokes that she started this chocolate shop in Royal Oak, Michigan, to feed her love of chocolate, and it's a passion many share. I think chocolate is almost like a sensuous experience. I like the way it tastes, I like the way it feels, I like the way it smells. There's nothing about it I don't like. I love it. I really do. I eat it every chance I get. So I'll search the house over for chocolate. If a candy bar, chocolate pieces, anything, a chocolate cookie, anything with chocolate in it. So why is it that chocolate makes people go nuts, but most people can just walk right by broccoli? There may be a connection between eating the foods that you really like, food addictions, if you like, and actual drug addictions. They may all involve the same mechanism. A study at the University of Michigan indicates that the combination of fat and sugar in chocolate releases opioid peptides in your brain. That's the substance that makes you feel pleasure and reduces pain. So is there anything wrong with indulging in a truffle or two or three or four? On the one hand, the major type of fat in chocolate is the kind that won't raise your cholesterol. But on the other hand, since all those calories in chocolate can make you chubby, here are some suggestions for the addicted. It may sound strange, but try getting some exercise. It has a similar effect on the chemicals in the brain and helps some people curb the cravings. Also, use dessert recipes with cocoa powder, which has a lot less fat than solid chocolate. And keep a food diary to see if chocolate shows up every time you're under a lot of stress. Mm. Well. Or maybe you should open a chocolate store like Gail Hart did. It didn't work for her, but eventually you might just get sick of all that chocolate. Elizabeth Schwartz, CNN. And finally, Teddy Roosevelt was right to say politicians should carry big sticks. A libertarian state senate candidate in New Hampshire had a close call with a bull moose this week. Dave Parker was putting up campaign signs when the moose charged him. He says he avoided the beast by making the fastest 50-yard dash of his life. Now here's a look at what's ahead on Headline News. New figures show the U.S. trade deficit is ballooning. Bill Clinton heads south after last night's debate while President Bush stumps in the key state of New Jersey. And Dutch authorities are looking at a possible cause of a tragic plane crash. Those stories and more two minutes away. I'm Judy Fortin. Around the world in 30 minutes, this is CNN Headline News. This is CNN Headline News.